So Trunksy was nice enough to send me their new Crux One 3D printer. So let's see what this small format $180 printer can get done. But first we're going to need to unbox it and put it all together. And as you can see this is packaged in a good amount of foam. And like most printers it comes with a bag of tools and parts to put it all together. Along with a little PLA so you can do some test prints. For now I'm going to leave these pieces in here and remove this layer of foam. And this is where the actual printer is. And it's really tightly packed in here. But it's also mostly assembled and just two pieces. So it should be minimal assembly. But even with it being two parts, it is connected so they need to come out at the same time. And with this thing being so small, it's pretty easy to take out in one go. Without too much fuss. But anyways, here's everything in the box all laid out. And you can see there's really not all that much here. But that's not a bad thing, seeing that you just don't have to put as much together. So let me get these protective coatings off real quick. And as I was moving stuff around, I noticed that the Y limit switch was broken. And it looks like it's just a little tab on this, so it might still work. But I'm not going to leave it like this, so I'm just going to use a little bit of super glue and glue it back in place. As long as none of the electrical connections are broken, this should work. And after a few seconds, it will all dry up, and we'll see once we turn it on if this is broken or not. And since we're looking at this bottom part, might as well check out the Z-axis belt. And this is a little different design than I'm used to. It has some rollers that it goes through with the stepper motor off to the side. And before assembling the rest of this, I'm going to actually flip it over and take off the bottom panel to see what's inside of this printer. And with that off, you can see everything on the inside. And the main board is just right here, and it has its own little fan. But I need to take that off too. And now you can see the full board, which isn't anything special. And the only thing I really see that's wrong are the main power cords don't have ferrules on them. But over at the power supply itself, everything has a crimped on connector, and this is a 24 volt power supply. So with that out of the way, let's actually put this thing together. And it's pretty straightforward, just line up all the holes with this part here, and then put in your five bolts. And there's also two more bolts for the spool holder. And there's just a plug right here that you need to plug into the Z stepper motor. And there's a handle that gets installed on the top of this. You just need to lower the Z axis to actually install it. And it's only two bolts. And it feels sturdy in the hand, and makes it a lot easier to move around. And the last thing I need to do is actually install the build area, which is a magnetic sheet that is basically just a big sticker that sticks down. And this just goes onto the aluminum bed. And with that on, your PEI build surface will just stick down to this. And with that done, I need to tighten up this belt right here, and we should be good to go. And with everything plugged in, it's time to turn it on with the switch on the side right here. And it looks like everything loaded up fine and it's making its happy little beeping noises. So it's time to see if this thing will home itself or if that back sensor is broken. And it looks like I had no problems there and I got lucky with that limit switch. And since we're on the topic of limit switches, the Z limit switch is adjustable. And this is because it homes on this little knob and you can screw it down or up. On the front of the printer it's nice to see that you have a lot of options for putting data into it, even a full size USB plug. And it comes with its own little USB adapter that has a micro SD card in it. So I'm just going to plug that in and see what's on this. So it looks like it has some instructions, some test models, and the slicer for this printer. So I'll be definitely printing some of the test files. But before I can do that, I need to level this printer. And there is leveling assistance on this, but for the most part, it's manual leveling. It is nice how they give you a little card to do this with, but you can use a normal piece of A4 paper as well. The assisted leveling is actually really easy to use and just tell it to go to each point and make sure everything is adjusted right. I only had to go around the bed two times and everything was pretty much perfect. So we can finally start printing. I'm going to load up some Matter Hacker's Silk PLA and to load it into the machine you have to feed it through a filament runout sensor. And if you've ever used this style of runout sensor you can know that they're a little hard to feed stuff through sometimes. But once you get it through it it's also going to go up through what looks like a Bowden tube. And it's not technically a Bowden tube because this is a direct drive machine. And you'll have to take this end and put it into the tube that goes into the actual direct drive unit. And to get it in there, there's a little lever that you pull down on and it'll release the tension so you can push it through. So with everything loaded up, I'm actually going to print something. And it's nothing amazing, it's just a calibration cube from the SD card. And the noise you're hearing in the background is actually this printer. All that noise is fan noise, which isn't really that loud in person. This also has silent stepper drivers, so you're not going to hear the machine moving around. And from what I've seen, just about every modern 3D printer has silent stepper drivers now. So I think I'm going to stop mentioning that in future videos, just like how I don't say it has a heated bed. But one thing I will mention is, they are using metal wheels for the X and Y axis, that also travel along these little metal guide rails. But anyways, after about half an hour, it looks like we have our first successful print. And honestly, it came out looking a lot better than I thought it would. Especially just printing from a random profile that was on the printer already, with a silk PLA. It does look like it has a little bit of ghosting on the letters, but honestly not that bad. So I started up another random print off of the test files. 
using the same PLA, and came back a few hours later, and this little guy was here. Overall looks pretty good, besides the top part of the head has a lot of under extrusion, and that tends to happen with this material for some reason. Even after drying it and everything, it still does this sometimes. And since everyone's been comparing this to the Purusha Mini, why not put them up against one another, seeing that I have one. And I'm not going to be printing anything crazy on both of them, it's just going to be the calibration cube using the same exact material on both of them, and see how they come out. I did make sure to preheat both of them, and I tried to start them around the same time. The Prusa Mini started off a little bit sooner, but not by much. And this print took a little over half an hour on both of them. And no real surprise, they both were successful prints. The bigger surprise to me at least is this little $180 printer holding its own against the Prusa Mini Plus, which is a $550 printer. And here they are side by side. The overhangs on the letters for the Prusa Mini came out a little bit better but there's a ton of little under extrusions all over the piece. And on the Crux 1, the only real problem other than the letters not being as sharp is some ghosting on them. And this is the same exact filament from the same roll. I just cut some off and threw it inside the Purusha Mini. And I'm sure I can fix most of this by just tuning in my settings, but these are just the default settings and showing you what they can do. And seeing that the Crux printer is a direct drive, I wanted to see how well it can print TPU or a flexible filament. And it actually wasn't too hard to feed this through, and you can see how flexible this stuff really is. So I just downloaded an RC car tire, and I didn't want to wait 20 hours for it to print, so I scaled it down to 25% of its normal size. And it printed successfully as you can see, and it came off the plate pretty easy. That being said, scaling it down was kind of a mistake, because it made the connecting points between the inside of the wheel and the outside very thin, and they just kind of break apart as I squeeze this. So totally my fault, but it did print. So I just sliced the calibration cube to be printed in TPU, and it came out fine. Or as fine as TPU prints, without any tuning. And it does have a 15% infill, so it's not the squishiest thing in the world, but it does have some give. And the last thing I wanted to do for this video was print the entire print volume. So I just made a square that was 180 by 180, and I found out I can't do that with how the slicer is set up, so I just did it as big as I possibly could, which was 165 millimeter square. And just looking at this first layer, it is coming out really nice. Leveling this printer was really easy to get pretty much perfect. And after about five hours and a loud crunching noise, here it is. And what caused the loud crunching noise was the print head trying to home itself and crashing into the print. But here it is, and it should give you a better feel for how big you can make something on this small printer. And you might notice that the walls of this are a little wavy, and that's just because it's a single layer that is 0.4 millimeters thick, so not very strong. And up until this point, I feel like I've only been saying really good things about this printer, and it is not all good. Like how the display is very mushy feeling, along with it not being really responsive, and its viewing angle is really bad. You have to be right over it, pretty much. And honestly, it's not really that big of a problem. The thing I'm more concerned about is the software side of this. So for a beginner that gets one of these and, say, downloads Cura, there is no profile for it. And even in their instructions, they tell you to use a different printer profile and modify things, which really is easy enough. But at this price point, it's most likely going to be a first printer for someone. And even after following the instructions completely, there's still G-code that needs to be modified at the start of the print, so it actually purges on the build surface instead of doing it off the side like mine is doing based on their instructions. And this is a really easy fix for Tronxy to do. They just need to submit all the information to Kira so they can add it. And depending on when you're watching this video, they might have already done this. But other than the barriers to entry for people that are new to this, this is a good little printer that can print just about any material you throw at it. And it's really hard to beat the price of only $180 for this whole thing. Or with the PEI sheet, you can get one for $190. And if you're looking for links for anything I talked about in this video, all of it will be in the description below. And I'm definitely going to put this thing through its paces, and if anything goes wrong, I'll make sure to make a video about it. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this little machine something you would be interested in, or is it just too small for what you're wanting to do? Well, anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.